Okay, in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this regular meeting of the Planning Board of the Township of Franklin has been provided. If everyone could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the, flag the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Okay, roll call. Councilman Chase. Here. Mr. Coble asked to be excused. Mr. LaCourt. Here. Ms. MacGyver. Here. Mr. Mettler. Here. Mr. Pettit. Here. Mr. Stevens. Mr. Here. Thomas asked to be excused. Mr. Onyaka. Chairman Arsini. Here. Okay, so we're going to go uh, a little bit out of order tonight just because of uh, the fact that uh, Vince needs to go through the resolutions and see who's eligible to vote based on who was here in the past. So we're going to leave the minutes, the resolutions, and the discussion till the end. We're going to, um, since uh, Peter has all three applications and your architect isn't yet here, for, he, is. he is here. This only, this only take a couple minutes. We'll, what, what, do you, what, what do you want to do first? Since we're all set up, we'll do 495. We'll okay, so we're going to go to the second hearing, which is PLN 13-00008-495 Weston Canal Road. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Peter Lanford appearing on behalf of the applicant. Um, this is an application for an amended site plan approval for a property located at 495 Weston Canal Road, uh, Thank you, sir. which has been before this board now. This will be the third time that this board has reviewed this application in the last 10 years. Uh, I think, as I said to Dr. Chase when he came in tonight, he probably knows this application better than I do because he's seen it three times. Uh, ten years ago, this property was owned by a company called Jane Enterprises who came before the board for a distribution, warehouse distribution facility uh, and was granted site plan approval for that project. Uh, after they obtained approval, uh, they decided to move in a different direction. They were a company based out of South Plainfield and uh, they decided to expand South Plainfield rather than to move to Franklin. Thereafter, uh, a few years ago, uh, this property was acquired by 495 Weston Canal Road LLC uh, and they came in to amend that plan uh, to basically convert the previously approved uh, warehouses distribution center to a data center. Uh, were granted the approval. In essence, the plan did not really change. The buildings were in the same location. The parking was in the same location. The driver was in the same location. Everything was the same. Uh, given what is going on in the business of data centers right now, the owner of the property, uh, 495 Western Canal Road, has now made a decision to go full circle. And we are now back for an approval of the same project as a distribution facility. So we're back where we were 10 years ago. Uh, that's the background of this. Uh, I do need to present some brief testimony to explain to the board uh, the existing situation, the, what we're proposing. Uh, the only variance that is involved in this application involves a pump house, uh, which was previously granted in the previous two applications. And again, nothing has changed from the pre previous two applications other than what the building is being used for. Having said that, uh, I am going to call as my first witness, Mr. Bartels. I want to raise your right hand, sir. <clears throat> Do you assault me, swear, affirm, tell the truth, nothing but the truth? I Give us the benefit of your background, sir. Sure. I graduated from oh, I graduated from New Jersey Institute of Technology in 1998. I've been working in the field of land development ever since that time. I was licensed in New Jersey uh, starting in 2003 and I'm sorry yes 2003 and I've been um, I've testified before a numerous planning boards and zoning boards throughout the state. License in what profession sir? In professional engineering in civil. That's my background my, my BS was in civil engineering. Okay. And then, just for the record you were here and testified previously when this matter was uh, before the board when this matter was turned into a data center. Correct almost two years to the day. Okay. Uh, 
Mr. Bartels, and I know we've handed out an exhibit, and the exhibit is are colored drawings of what was in, your, in the package that was submitted to the board just to make it easy for the board to follow along. Mr. Bartels, can you briefly indicate what the present condition is of the subject property? Can you describe the property and what's on it? Sure. Uh, the property remains largely as it was two years ago. Uh, the front portion of the property along Western Canal Road has been uh, Development has begun based on the prior approval. The road widening has begun. Um, if you frequent the area, you may notice that's been kind of held up for a while. The holdup there is we've been waiting for PSE&G and Verizon to relocate some telephone poles, uh, utility poles, I should say, so that we can complete that widening and complete the drainage improvements that were required as part of the prior approval. Uh, but that work has begun. A driveway was cut into the site, the same driveway that is proposed in this current plan. Uh, and so the clearing that was approved with the prior plan along Western Canal Road and into the property has been completed. However, the back 70, you know, 65 percent of the site or so ha continues to be farmed as it was before uh, and remains untouched okay. otherwise. Can you let the record reflect that Mr. Onyaka arrived uh, at roughly 7.40? Mr. Bartels, very briefly, can you describe what we are proposing as part of this application? Sure. We are proposing two distribution center buildings, both of 462,799 square feet for a total of 925,598 square feet. That's a building coverage of 30 percent, where 50 percent is allowed. Uh, the total project proposes 59.7 percent impervious coverage, where 60 percent is allowed. Uh, the floor area ratio is 0.3, where 0.5 is allowed. And the project proposes um, 238 parking spaces under the office, where, uh, office and warehouse uh, categories in the zoning ordinance. I will mark that document that you're going to refer to as uh, A1, which is actually part of the site plan sheet A2. Is that correct, Mr. Bartos? That's correct. That's part of the packet on your uh, that I've gave you this evening. Okay. And we have both vehicle parking uh, that we're proposing to construct and then banking some parking spaces because we do not feel that those would be necessary for the proposed use. Is that correct? That is correct. There's 238 proposed to be constructed. Uh, there's 469 required by ordinance. The additional uh, land bank parking that's shown to the north of Building A currently contains 338 spaces. Uh, based on some comments we've received, that number will slightly decrease, but the number will remain uh, so that the total would be well above the um, requirement. Okay, and, and I indicated that there was one variance that was previously granted in all the applications. Just for the record, can you point out what that variance is and where that structure is located? Sure. That structure, unfortunately, is not really shown on this plan. It is located in the southeast corner beyond where um, this radius is shown in the uh, extreme southeast corner. And that is, it's, it's in essence a concrete pad with a wet well in it. The only visible, really visible structure from, say, a neighboring property would be the fence that goes around it and the electrical control panel that, go, that um, controls the pumps in the, uh, in the pump station. There's no pump house, per se. Okay. And the reason it was located in that corner was why? That was located there because the, uh, this, the buildings will drain by gravity back to the pump station and then be pumped out to the sewer out on Randolph Road Okay, thank through you. the easement. Hey, Peter, I know this is not customary, but, you know, I know that looking at the only major report that we have here uh, that addresses any differences between this plan and the previous iteration, and I would say that the majority of Mark's comments uh, are focused on the parking and land banking. So as long as we're on that topic, why don't we just deal with it? I think okay. we can address all those comments. Well, I, I think there was an issue, and I, I've had some discussions with Mark and, and with Vince. Originally, and I'll deal with it very quickly, originally the area that was pointed out by Mr. Bartels as land banked truck parking is really land banked car parking. So uh, we do have the requisite number of parking spaces because that area uh, in the front of the buildings along the driveway will be the banked parking area. Uh, it is not 
the plan I think denoted it as truck parking and it is not going to be truck parking. So once we just make the correction of the notation on the plan, uh, I don't think there is another issue with respect to the parking unless Mr. Healy would disagree with that. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. I think what happened is the plan that they had originally submitted uh, that in that area where they're showing land banking, they also showed uh, showed it as trailer parking. And my understanding is, uh, I believe you wrote something to uh, Vince Dominic, basically indicating that that's no longer the case, that trailer parking area is not proposed in that area, and it's only proposed for land banked parking. That's correct. So if that's the case, and, and we just had confirmation, um, my comment 1A uh, would go away, 1B one, uh, one would go away, Frankly, I think 1C probably goes away. Actually, I think it's 2. Isn't it? yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah, basically, my, basically, the whole comment of, of, <laughs> of my whole comment about 1, about the trailer parking, that obviously goes away because you're no longer proposing that trailer parking area. Okay. Um, 2A goes away. I think the rest would, would apply. Yeah. Uh, the only other but, one, but Mark, very briefly, you indicated that you wanted sidewalks to connect the land bank parking uh, to the entry doors of both buildings. We don't have a problem doing that when we develop sure. the, yeah. the bank yeah, parking. Just like space. any other, yeah. you know, the lighting is essentially land, right. land banked and, and the islands and okay. so are the sidewalks. What about 2C, the landscaping in the banked islands? That's it. Um, we when I stated earlier that the, the number would probably go down, that's one of the comments I was referring to because the addition of landscaped islands within that lot mm -hmm. will wind up losing spaces. Currently, there's 338 shown, so that may drop down to you know 325, 330 spaces or so, um, which kind of goes to 2B as well, I think. Mm -hmm. um, currently, we show 50, over 50% as to be constructed. That's the 238. Mm -hmm. So we have even more than that shown as land banked mm -hmm. but we wouldn't necessarily you know we wouldn't construct more than we needed that's just so what you, that you're saying that the landscaped islands won't be needed no that no will I'm be saying needed we'll will provide them oh, okay we will provide them that's going to okay. cause the number of spaces provided oh, to, to, okay, to, to go down gotcha. right all right sorry about that and then everything else in mark's report uh and, and it, quite frankly it was very complimentary to the, the plan uh what other open items that are there we will comply with? Uh, yeah, I think the reason for that is that basically the previous plan for the Dana Center, there were a whole bunch of conditions from the board, from historic. Uh, basically, this plan is exactly the same. Correct. Down to every last little detail. So Those were really, there was, really wasn't much more to say. So they're basically complying with what was approved previously. If we're on reports, Mr. Uh, Orsini, can I, do you want me to run through, Mr. Uh, it's, it's uh, up, it's well, up. the only other point I think we need to make, and, and just one clarification so the record is clear, uh, can you just deal with the entrance to the subject property and how we're treating Western Canal Road, and if there is a difference between how we're going to treat uh, Western Canal Road uh, as far as left turn lanes as opposed to the originally approved plan? Sure. The plan that was approved previously provided for widening on Western Canal Road in uh, accordance with the approval from the county. That plan is will remain the same with the likely exception that um, initially the county was not requiring us to actually stripe the lane just to provide the space for it. Based on their review letter, I'm anticipating that we will be striping the left turn lane. Now, you have also had an opportunity to review the report uh, generated by Mr. Hauk, uh, dated May 31st, 2013, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and there are a couple comments we do need to talk about. Uh, he's asked on item number one to basically uh, depict or to submit a plan showing the current conditions of the subject uh, property since there were some changes since the last survey. Uh, we will agree to submit an existing conditions plan, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, item number two. Uh, I do not believe, and I've discussed this matter with Mr. Dominic, who is the zoning officer, that lot 1101 is not part of this application. Uh, there are no site improvements. There's easements across that site where we're putting utilities underground, but since there are no site improvements, it's not subject to this application. And that he's, you're correct. Okay. And uh, item number 
five, very briefly, there, we had a report from the county asking for a contribution. We had an, a report from the township asking for a contribution. Uh, we don't have a problem making the contribution. I just want to make sure that whatever they're asking for is not overlapped or that they're asking for the same thing. Uh, but if there are differences in road improvement contributions, one for uh, Randolph Road for the township as opposed to the county, we will make both contributions. Uh, so I just want the record to clarify, to be clear on that. And I think just, if we can step back to Carl's report, because I think the board members are looking through their packet yeah, for his it. for his memo, yeah. and I, they don't have it. Vince, do you, do you have it? Did, did I you have it. Some, yeah, but if, if, it was is, on the internet. Is, is there anything, Pete, that you can't comply with? No. Uh, other, I just want to, yeah, again, I'm just trying to clarify things for the record. No, there's yeah. nothing that we really can't comply with. The last item is that uh, he asked that domestic and fire service water supply shall be provided by Franklin Township since a water main is located within, within Randolph Road. Based on the approval, uh, previous approval, we have an agreement in place that was adopted by the council where water was going to be provided by American Water. Yeah, that, that's we, a file. Yeah, that well, we, 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 need, yeah, we need to talk about that because that the only reason why the planning board and the, the governing body allowed that to happen was due to the extreme amount of water that was going to be used. Now that the amount of water is minimal, uh, that the township will want to and is able to and, and is able to service it and, and will be able to service it with just another couple feet of, of water main. There, there, is, there is no big deal. Okay. We're not asking you to extend it, you know, right, right Jim? They just have to... About 20 it, feet of pipe yeah. to connect to the main that's in Randolph. Yeah. That's fine. Again, we did have an agreement in place. I wanted the record to be clear. No, I, I was aware of the agreement, but that was when we had the data center, uh -huh. a lot of water used for cooling, right. all kinds of other things that were involved with that. Now that it's going to be this, we don't need that. you don't need that quantity of water. That's so agreed. And we'd rather have you as our customer, to be honest about it. Yeah. And, and, and we really don't care who we send the check to as long as we have water. As long as you send a check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just in looking at, at Carl's report, I mean, uh, most of it is pretty uh, yeah. standard stuff. And then there's the one comment that sort of overlaps with the uh, marks on the land banking and the landscaped islands. And so I think, I think there's nothing there that's controversial at all. No, I, I, I think, again, I, just little points that I had to make for the record to clear it up. Uh, I don't have any other questions of this witness unless the board has any questions. Are there, are there any other staff reports that uh, you need to address? Uh, all the other staff reports uh, were fine. There are none that need so to be addressed. I don't think there were very yeah, many. Fire prevention had no issues. Health department had no <coughs> issues. Yeah, it looks like fire, health, environmental. Yep. At least the cover sheet saying no objection. Right. And, and also for the record, uh, we appear before the historic commission who reviewed this and also approved it. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Up. I think the historic commission did request some additional trees. Why don't you do the water part of it? Yeah. <laughs> they, they did the... <laughs> And where we can supplement them, uh, and I, I think we have some trees in, in here, and where they asked for some additional trees was over in front of this basin. Mm -hmm. The problem is this is already a wooded area. Okay. Uh, so I don't know how many more trees we can get in there. I think for the, what we can do is when we're ready, to, when the basin is in, where we can supplement additional trees, we will. But when you looked at it at the Historic Commission, you didn't have this, all this information. But this is predominantly wooded already. It's wooded and sloped, if I recall, too. Yeah. yeah. But if there's a few trees needed, that, I don't, that will not be a problem. Ted. Uh, one thing, and I've probably said this before, I think uh, you particularly want screening behind the little cemetery because there's very little of the existing vegetation there where you do have two rows of spruce trees and by the way I agree with Mark's comment that uh, white pines are okay in this development because it's not a question really of, of screening it from neighbors <coughs> Uh, but I just I notice you have some viburnum shrubs on the list there and I would it's just suggesting having some viburnum shrubs as well right behind the the cemetery so that it'll look a little more like 
uh, the existing vegetation that we have in other places. On the cemetery side of the evergreens or on the on the cemetery side, side the cemetery of the evergreens, okay. because that's the one place you see up from Western Canal Road okay. a little more, because you have the cemetery instead of the uh, <coughs> the existing vegetation. Okay. The other point, uh, this is going to maybe surprise Mr. Lanford a little more. Uh, your Utility lines out to Randolph Road, are those all going to be underground? They are, yes, they are going to be underground. Good. The reason is... I'm sorry, the reason I, I hesitated was I was trying to remember. They come onto the site on above, uh, below ground. On site, PSE and G is transitioning to an overhead line, yeah, which is going yeah. to go out. Well, there you're going to have buildings and so forth. The field between you and Randolph Road for the last three or four winters, Sand Hill Cranes have spent some time there. Uh, and they're, while they're not an endangered species, they're a very large and well worth seeing species, and I wouldn't want them flying into overhead lines. But actually, I think where you're going to be, you're right at the end of the field and then perhaps crossing the next field up that's between Randolph Brook and House Foods, and that's right. probably not so much of a problem. But if they're all underground, no problem. I don't know whether the cranes have been using the field that is your property also, but if I that's the case, they won't be able to. <laughs> you couldn't see into that field even from Randolph Road. Right. So I'll just pray that um, Pillar of Fire continues to plant that field to corn because I, th I think the cranes like to spend time in harvested corn fields. Okay. okay, any other questions for the board? <clears throat> no, do you have any other witnesses? I do have my traffic consultant here, however, just for the record. I mean, I'm glad to call him, but we did a traffic report in 2003 when this was approved. Uh, we did a traffic report now for this application. Uh, same gentleman did both reports, and there is nothing that has changed in his report, both as to levels of service or recommendations. Uh, but if the board wants to hear his testimony, I'll be glad to bring him up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. Like, like you said, it hasn't really uh, changed any, and the improvements to the road are being made. So, uh, uh, hey, just one command, one question. Sure. Uh, Western Canal's County Road, right? That's correct. And they're going to take care of the improvements of that road? No, we're, we've got... No, but I mean, with the county, you're going to work with... In other words, our engineer is not getting involved in that. It's the way I read his report and the conversation I had with him, he's only worried about the roads that are under our jurisdiction. That is correct. And anything you have to do on that road, whether it's donation or improvement, that'll be with the county. That is correct, and we've already met with them, and we have a report from that. Just we'll clarify it. Thank you. Anybody else? I have no other witnesses. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, uh, ju just a strange question, in, in that this is very nice, but um, when you go to the back of it and see the example of buildings, you see example of examples of data centers, and this is not a, a, a data center anymore. So um, I'm not sure uh, to what extent I can go by those pictures. <laughs> But, but you can also see on A6 what we are building on site, and you can see it's going to be a fairly, even though it'll never be visible from the roadway, it's going to be yeah. fairly attractive. And again, uh, Russo Development, who is the underlying developer, has built in town, owns right. properties in town, and mm -hmm. we want the board to basically know what Russo <coughs> Development is all about. So A6, even though it's labeled a data center, it's showing, this is what's actually, so that's just a little typo, this is what you're actually proposing. Is that right? A6. A6. Correct. A6 is, are the building elevations for this building, correct? I was showing all the loading docks, which are on the, consistent with what you submitted in the, correct. In the plan set. That is correct, yes. Okay. Before you leave that, uh, is this a, for lack of a better word, a public warehouse facility, or is it dedicated to No, it's not public storage. It's going to be a 
some some company will use correct a dedicated operation yeah, correct. More, more than one company right yeah okay i mean you'll, and you'll divide up the space inside yeah. which it's not self-storage or something no no like i didn't that. mean it that way so oh. much i mean it, it's like uh, we had an application years ago for roadway express okay that was like a didn't fly but that was their application very similar building on a different location that was in a different zone which was the problem with it but it was a lot of but it was it, it was their operation you know it wasn't half them half somebody else so here it could be any number of companies with their own vehicles yes their own trucks their own that is correct okay all right okay thank you sure. okay. question on on the traffic uh you, on your little table here uh table one it says peak hour uh enter 70 exit 32 total 102 in the evening it's a total of 111 that's almost two is that all trucks two trucks per minute i yeah i think we might as well swear, just swear him in since we have a board question and, and that if we have any from anybody from the public we'll have to take care of it. Do you solemnly swear and affirm, tell the truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Can you state your name for the record, please? Sure. Douglas Poliniak, P-O-L-Y-N-I-A-K. And Mr. Poliniak, by whom are you employed? Dolan and Dean Consulting Engineers. And as a traffic consultant, is that correct? That's right. And uh, have you appeared before this board on previous occasions and testified as to uh, other applications involving the issue of traffic? Yes, I have. And you're licensed in the state of New Jersey? I am. Accepted. Okay. Uh, can you answer uh, Ms. McIver's question? Yeah, the, the data you see there in Table 1 was calculated using uh, Institute of Transportation Engineers data for uh, what's called high cube warehouse distribution centers. It's for facilities such as this where they're highly mechanized, um, high ceilings, uh, not you know substantial uh, employee activity. As I said, everything's high tech and mechanized. Uh, those volumes in, in that table, based on additional ITE data, assume, or they've calculated, that um, approximately 30 to 40% of the site traffic is uh, tractor trailer traffic. So, um, you know, you could just apply 70, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 30, 40% to the 70 entering. So you're somewhere around, you know, 20, 20 to 20 trucks coming in in the morning. So 20 trucks per minute? Per hour. Per hour. Per hour. Yeah, so uh, you know, maybe like a uh, you know truck every every three, three minutes, minutes or so. Big Correct. heavy lumbering trucks, and that's not going to affect the level of service. Uh, uh, no, it does not. Is, you know, especially because that's the entering movement. So uh, the county is requesting that the applicant design a left turn lane into their site, and that'll allow for the for the vehicles to exit the southbound Western Canal Road flow, so vehicles can bypass them and con continue to the south. How long will that extra lane be to allow these trucks to get up to speed or to decelerate? Um, th that's what we're working on with the county, but it'll be in, a, in excess of 100, 100 feet, I imagine. That's just for the lane. Then you, you also have to deal with tapers to, to shift so vehicles over. So 100 feet for three trucks? Mm, okay. Yeah, and we'll work with the county. Uh, they're not going to, uh, uh, I'm fairly certain they won't let us uh, under design a, uh, a left turn lane. Just one, one, one truck every three minutes on average. Right. So unless the truck is sitting there for three minutes. Yeah, and then the volumes aren't that truck. high. Like I said, we got, you know, relatively good level of service entering the site. And and you're basing uh, that on a textbook. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our, our traffic projections. So we really don't know what it is. I mean. Not to be, I'm not diminishing, so is not diminishing your testimony. There's no way for you to know until we actually get into operation and see what's happening. No, but, you yeah, know, know, it's, yeah. It's <laughs> well, you have 300 loading bays. Is the, what loading capacity is the textbook based on? It's based on a square footage for a facility. Uh, so, we, you know, it's, it's calculated per square foot, for 1,000 square feet. So it doesn't second. take into account the number of loading bays. No, it does not, but it assumes that the volume that they've calculated is approximately 30 or 40 percent trucks. So it accounts for a total volume based on the square footage, which, you know, can be loading bays, can be storage, can be parking, uh, you know, office space. Those are all the, uh, the types of amenities associated with these high cube distribution centers. Not only the office. 
to one story high bay. It would be nice to have it a little bit more accurate than that. To have a little bit more of an idea how many of those yeah. huge, I'm talking, you know, these are 18 wheelers coming in and out of the site per hour rather than just this, it's really a guesstimate. Well, I'm, I, the problem is you don't have the, you don't have tenants. We don't. <coughs> the owner doesn't know who his tenants are even going to be. There may be somebody in there that doesn't even use tractor trailers. He may he may straight trucks. And there may be somebody else in there uses. To be honest about it, you know, a couple of tractor trailers a minute. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but we, there's no way to know that. He doesn't know who his tenancy is going to be. And the only thing they have to go by is what the Institute of Transportation Engineers says is the rule. So we go to go by the rule. If it turns out speculatively that doesn't work, well, they may have to make amendments or do something else. But I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm on your side. I just no, I, no, I don't know I how understand. you would go. About, I don't know how you would go about developing more accurate numbers. I mean, more precise numbers. I should say. Just in this, at this stage of the game. Right. Now, and I think that from experience, I don't think the county is shy in making applicants provide you know the do the necessary road improvements to accommodate their use so no and, and they're going to review the data with a fine tooth comb and make sure they provide the uh the level of you know the left turn lane with a sufficient queuing to allow you know for the trucks you've actually Still from the book obviously yes. for the reasons we mentioned but you know they're going to have to work that out with the county exactly how long that has to be and you know the nature of the their entrance and what improvements are made to western canal road Timing on the lights, all the rest of that. Yeah. We received correspondence from the county. They've reviewed our traffic report and agreed with the uh, projected trip generation for the site. So, so you're still uh, working out the details, though, of exactly what needs to be done to Western Canal Road? With respect to the design, uh, well, we know that we're going to be providing a left turn lane into the site. Uh, so, so that's the improvement at the site driveway. The, the length and width, uh, the width may have probably been established already because. But as far as the the length and tapers, um, that's something we have to work with them on. Is, is the county also working on a new signal for that road? They are at, yeah, at that, Randolph. Yeah, it's not ready yet, but are they working on it? No, and I actually spoke to the county engineer, um, our county traffic engineer, <coughs> and that, the, the light is fully funded. Um, they're just waiting on some, I think, DEP approvals, and he said hmm. that they anticipate the beginning of construction of that signal in the spring. Spring of what year would DEP be? <laughs> <laughs> Optimistically, should, next year. Now, that, that is a light at Randolph Road. What about coming off 287? There's no light there. That's where the signal's going, I think. I think that's the one they're working on, which will help your problem, too, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to create some staggering, some stagger in the traffic flow. And I also think that's part, <coughs> excuse me, part of our contribution is toward that traffic signal. And again, I think part of our contribution to the township or some improvements that the township is making to uh, Randolph Road. Right but yeah. Any other questions from the board? Seeing none, uh, make, uh, um, I entertain a motion to uh, open to the public. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I would move that we hold a public hearing on this application. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting's open to the public on this matter. Anybody wishing to come forward? Mr. Chairman, seeing no one coming forward on this application, I would move that its public hearing be closed. I'll second again. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, anything more to say? Nothing further. Okay. Well, what about yeah. signs of, for Maybe idling trucks? Hmm? To reduce the amount of idling the trucks do in line? Uh, you mean once they're in the site? Yes. Yeah. Because of Actually, the emissions. Actually, that's a reasonable point. You know, we you have know, I th Isn't there like a state right law there. about idling when you're, like, I, even at Wawa, trust me, I've seen this, the Wawa on Route 27, it's, there's a sign there saying, you know, turn off your car, don't idle while you're inside state law. I don't wonder if it's the same for. We have them in our parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, not, well, we can put those signs up. I mean, it's just an environmental yeah. thing. You know, if you're offloading and you're going to be there for a while, shut the truck off rather than have it running the whole time. I would think with the price for gas and diesel, they would shut them off. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a win-win. Right. Win-win-win, perhaps. But, yeah. It's not a problem. Okay. So with that, uh, the 
There's no more board discussion. I entertain a motion for this application. If anybody chooses to make one. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move approval of the application. Second. Vince? Councilman Chase? Yes. Mr. LaCourt? Yes. Mr. Diver? Yes. Mr. Mettler? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Chairman Arsini? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, Peter, uh, when I want to go back to 507 Hamilton? Yes. I, I think I saw somebody come in that looked like an architect. Yeah, actually, he's supposed to be testifying up in Morris County this evening, too, so I'm going to put yeah. him on first. Okay, so then our next hearing will be 507 Hamilton Street, LLC, PLN 13-00009. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Lanford appearing on behalf of the applicant. This is an application involving a building which formerly housed uh, the Somerset Inn, uh, one of the rather more iconic older buildings in this town where I spent many misguided evenings in my youth, some of which I fondly remember and some of which I hardly remember at all, but that's a whole nother story uh, for another night. Uh, a couple well, years. You didn't remember the next morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, as the board is probably aware, the building did sustain a fire uh, which damaged the upper two levels of the building, and the building has been unoccupied and unused for a significant period of time. Uh, my client, Mr. Addy, who is 507 Hamilton Street, is here this evening, has acquired the building. Uh, and is looking to basically uh, rehab, rebuild the building and uh, use it for uh, the intended purposes, which are permitted uses in the Hamilton Street Business District, a pharmacy on the lower level, uh, a portion of the lower level, and medical office and or general offices on the remaining part of the building. Uh, the the property in question is basically 100% impervious at the present time. Um, the only variance, well, there are many existing variances with respect to the subject property. Uh, the one significant change, and I'll spend a moment doing this on Mark A1, which is the site plan, which is part of your package, is to construct, to square off the rear of the building uh, the building right now basically goes to the rear property line. The proposed plan is to remove the garage that's currently there and square off the building. So to the extent that there's a new addition to the building to square it off, that new addition is in fact a variance. Uh, also, your current ordinance uh, does not allow three stories. Uh, actually, this building was a three story, and if you look at Mr. Healy's uh, exhibits and attachments, it's probably... Uh, some portions of it may even exceed three stories, but quite frankly, we will be holding the ordinance requirements of 35 feet in height, which is, is I'm sorry, 40 feet in height, which is the zone requirement in the zone. Uh, I'm going to call as my first witness uh, the architect, uh, Nasir, and I, I always butcher his last name, so I'll let him. Good evening. I do. Uh, Nasser Al Mukhtar. Uh, I'm going to spell the last name A L M U K H T A R. Mr. Al Mukhtar, you're a licensed architect in the state of New Jersey? Uh, yes, I am. And can you give the board the benefit of your educational and professional background? Uh, sure. I have a bachelor's degree in architecture. Uh, I'm licensed in the state of New Jersey as well as New York and Pennsylvania. Uh, I hold a current license in all those three states, uh, and I have testified in front of numerous boards uh, before this evening, I, uh, and I have been accepted as an expert witness in the field of architecture in all of them. And you're accepted here. Oh. Thank, Thank you so much, sir. All right, now, sir, um, first of all, you're familiar with and have visited the subject property? Yes, I have. All right, can you, with respect to the building itself, can you indicate to the board the present condition of the building on the subject property and describe the subject property for the record? Uh, sure. Uh, the, uh, the 
building as it currently stands is a fire damaged building, is a three story fire damaged building. Uh, and as shown on the first sheet, uh, A1, uh, on the left side, the drawing uh, number three is the existing conditions. Uh, it shows an L shaped uh, building on the right side of the property, on the eastern uh, side of the property. Uh, the existing building sits on a uh, 100 by 100 uh, foot lot, a square lot. Uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, almost totally fire damaged. It's in, in, in uh, uh, disrepair. It, do it does need reconstruction. Uh, and there is an existing two-car garage uh, uh, towards the rear of the property, and then there is a fully paved parking lot uh, on the left side of the uh, uh, lot. Okay. Now, can you indicate to the board what is the proposal with respect to the, this application? Uh, sure. Uh, the proposal is to basically square off the existing building, uh, and then uh, use the first floor as a uh, pharmacy and use the uh, uh, half of the first floor as a pharmacy as well as a lobby and an elevator. And then the rear portion of the new addition, the, or the existing building and the addition will be used as a medical office or a general office. And then we're proposing to add, to put two floors, uh, reconstruct the building put another two floors on top and uh, with two offices on each floor. So it would be a total of five offices and a pharmacy. Okay. Now, in, uh, you've had an opportunity to review the staff reports that were generated in conjunction with this application. And Mr. Dominic has pointed out certain variances that, that currently exist with respect to the property. Um, and I just want you to take the board through those variances, show them where they are on the subject property and whether any of them are being in any way exacerbated or changed as a result of this application? Uh, <clears throat> actually, all the variances except uh, probably for the parking, which uh, they're all pre-existing conditions. Uh, the first variance on the list uh, is the uh, side yard setback. Uh, five feet minimum is required. And we're proposing 2.5 feet, uh, but in reality, this is a pre-existing condition. Uh, the rear yard setback, 20 feet required. Uh, we're proposing two feet. Uh, this is again, it's an existing condition, and the squaring off the build of the building uh, will give us a better usage of the building. So we are proposing to go straight with this uh, existing rear wall of the existing building. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. The uh, number maximum number of stories is two and a half, and as we mentioned, it's a, an existing three. The previously existing three-story building, the upper floors are burned down, so we're trying to rebuild it to a, a three-story building. Impervious coverage, 85% uh, is the maximum allowed. Uh, existing is 100%. We tried to add some shrubbery and and just put a little bit uh, decrease the. Uh, the existing 100%, so now we're at 96%. We're still above the maximum uh, allowed, but we are uh, Im improving the situation here. I, I will deal with the parking issue. Uh, as this board is aware, the parking requirements in the Hamilton Street Business District indicate that we are required to provide so many parking spaces. And for commercial uses, if we do not have sufficient parking spaces, we are allowed to pay into a fund to the municipality so that the municipality can, in fact, uh, purchase land or develop their own parking lot. Uh, technically, this is not a variance because we are going to put in the 19 parking spaces that are going to fit on the site. The remaining s spaces that we cannot provide, we will pay into the fund as is the requirement of the ordinance. So we are complying with the Hamilton Street Business District Ordinance by providing on-site parking for some of the use, for some of the medical offices and commercial uses and paying into the fund for the rest of the spaces that we cannot provide on site. Um, why don't we defer the issue of signs until we get to, to the building sure. uh, to talk about the signs. So we, sure. we've basically covered the variances. Uh, now, you are also familiar with the Hamilton Street Business District Ordinance? Uh, yes, we did go through it. And, okay. uh, and did you, in fact, bring a small rendering of the frontage of the building to show what the building would look like? And perhaps you can talk to the compliance with the ordinance with respect to the building. And I will mark this uh, colored 
three-story structure rendering is A2. How many doctors are in this place? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, should I pass it to the... Uh, uh, I guess we can pass They can it. take a look at it. Excuse me, why are you passing that around? It's pretty small. Uh, something, you're going to talk about the parking additionally, or are you done with it? No, we're, we're going to get to the parking. Okay, I will save it for later. Yeah, right. We're going to talk about the park. Not, sorry, no, not the parking, the signs. Right. Parks, I, want, I, want ask, I want to ask a question about the parking. What about the parking? Sure. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. How many doctors are going to be in this right. building, as far as you can tell? I don't know. I didn't count the exam rooms. I didn't count the number of... We... Uh, what I'm concerned with is the patient. This, you, you talked about the Hamilton Street commercial buildings. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a I know it's a commercial building, but it's a professional commercial building. Correct. It's a little bit different when it comes to the parking situation. You have patients coming. You have a pharmacy now. So there's a lot of, to my, in, my, in my mind anyway, there's a lot of transient traffic going in on that site, at least during business hours or when the doctors have their, have their office hours. Uh, it looks like you have a lot of exam rooms. And I'm just wondering how that fits in with the parking. Because you are substantially light on the parking. Well, it, it, we, we are based on the ordinance requirements, nine spaces light. Uh, the ordinance requirement requires 27 spaces. The ordinance also indicates clearly that for any non the ordinance in the Hamilton Street Business District says any residential component to any development has to have on-site parking. Any commercial or professional, you are not required to have any parking. You can pay for every single parking space. Okay. So that's what All we're right. doing, and we're hoping. Uh, there are a couple other projects that I've gotten approved, and hopefully if, as the town accumulates some money, they will figure out where they want to put some municipal lots in and about Hamilton Street, which is part of the Hamilton Street Master Plan, mm -hmm. uh, so that people, if they can't, park on our site will have sufficient parking in close proximity to our site. Thank you. Okay. Can you go back to the building and sort of describe the materials and how we, how we intend to construct the building and show its compliance with the Hamilton Street business requirements? Sure. Um, as indicated in uh, sheet A3 uh, on the uh, submitted drawings, uh, we do show the four elevations of the uh, building. Uh, the front elevation that is uh, facing uh, Hamilton Street uh, is composed of a storefront. The first floor is mainly a storefront. It has, uh, on the right side, there's the uh, double door entrance to the upper floors. And then to the left of that, we have the uh, storefront for the, the proposed storefront for the pharmacy. Uh, and then also a double door in the middle of the facade uh, for the pharmacy entrance. Below that, we will have uh, a trim work, uh, maybe wood or composite material trim. And then above that, we also have uh, molding. We provided some molding. Uh, and we also worked and complied with the Hamilton Business District's requirements as far as the uh, windows, as far as the uh, using the siding. And then also we are, uh, use the brick also as required. That's, that would be used on the side elevation facing the parking lot. Uh, also in the parking lot in the middle of the building, towards the middle of the building, the first floor, there's another entrance with uh, an elevator. There's going to be an elevator there and a set of staircase. It goes to the upper floors. Okay, and now can you briefly indicate what signage you had originally proposed on the building, and, and there was one sign that uh, I had a discussion with Mr. Healy based on his report that we are going to relocate. So if you can just do a quick review of where we're proposing signage on the subject property. Uh, sure. The original proposal is uh, two signs at the front of the building. Uh, the first one is uh, right above the uh, main uh, storefront entrance of the pharmacy, and it indicates a pharmacy. Of course, ne not necessarily pharmacy, but probably we'll put the, the name of the pharmacy there. And we're proposing gooseneck lighting right on top of that sign. And then between the second and third floors, uh, one floor up, we're putting the medical center, and this would be the title of the entire building. 
and this would be again facing Hamilton Street. On the side facing the parking lot, uh, we were proposing up top, uh, um, I'm sorry, thank you, uh, a medical center and pharmacy. Uh, and this would be uh, the intent uh, of placing that sign uh, at that corner is for traffic uh, coming on, onto Hamilton Street. They would be noticing this building and it's, uh, it's it's, it's a right corner, and the, uh, we were thinking that the uh, location of this sign would be uh, perfect. Okay, and, and based on discussions that I had with Mr. Healy, uh, if the board were to grant the approval for that additional sign, we would be willing to remove that sign from that present location and relocate it above the window uh, to the pharmacy, if you can point that out on the, on the first level. Right here in the corner, that's correct. So we would we t take that sign off the top of the building and, and drop it down. Yes. And again, that would be a gooseneck sign. None of the signs that we are proposing are going to be internally lit, is that correct? That's correct, all uh, gooseneck lighting. Okay, and then the, f the last sign is over the entrance to uh, the medical. Did you say internally lit? They will not be in no, the okay. no. uh, all goes next. Okay. No, I think that makes a lot more sense to have all the signage at you know first floor level because otherwise it it, it doesn't look good, right? It looks sort of like a, uh, you know, it looks like something you might expect to see off of ninety five, right? Where maybe you have to have it at that elevation because you don't see it otherwise. But I I, you know, I, I think like you know when when we looked at it and we reviewed Mr. Healy's comments, we thought Mr. Healy was was correct that that sign was inappropriately located, uh, and. Uh, but you're, but you're still proposing the second floor one on the on the frontage. We would like to keep that one on the on the frontage of the building, uh, which on, I, on A2 would define the medical center. Again, we would need a variance. It's up to the board to allow that or not allow it because uh, it is an identification sign for the building and not for a tenant, which is not provided for in the ordinance. We had a similar sign on Independence Crossing uh, at the intersection of Franklin Boulevard and uh, Hamilton Street to identify the building, and we did need a variance for that. And that's up to the board. Um, also, uh, Nasir, when reviewing Mr. Healy's report, uh, there was a discussion, and again, Hamilton Street Business wanted basically the, a lot of the doors to the buildings uh, to not open externally. Is that correct? Uh, yes, they wanted the doors to be recessed, actually, okay. the front door of the pharmacy. Okay, and can we change the front facade of the building or actually move the building out uh, to the property line, which is permitted in order to achieve, again, that goal of the uh, Hamilton Street Business District Ordinance and also the comment of Mr. Healy? Uh, actually, yes, because the existing structure is set back uh, approximately four feet from the front property line. So if we extend that wall all the way to the property line, then we can easily achieve the uh, uh, recess door effect that uh, the, uh, business, the Hamilton Business District is asking for. Okay. Uh, how wide is the sidewalk between the structure and the street? Uh, I would say it's uh, about 10 feet. Also, uh, Seal, with respect to the sidewalk, in Hamilton Street Business District did issue a report that they wanted us to redo that sidewalk to bring it in compliance with their requirements uh, with the Brick Soldier course, and we are going to uh, do that. So okay. we're going to redo the sidewalk, and whatever the street frontage amenities that are required under the Hamilton Street Business District, I can't say that, ordinance, we will in fact do. Very good. Okay. Um. So basically, you'll satisfy their bold face type in the, that letter that they have attached to our plans. We're going to do the streetscape. I, I don't know if there's any street lighting that is required or shown on their plan that's required in front of our site, but if it is, it will be whatever their requirements are. Yeah, uh, I mean, their, their report is very positive right. with yes. that one. Um, request mm -hmm. and it sounds like the applicant is willing to do that so that is correct um, well yeah they mentioned <coughs> including the street lighting design so yeah. there must be some 
it, again, I don't know if they're in there. They have a master plan, and I don't know if there was any street lighting called for in front of this building. If there is, then we will obviously. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <clears throat> you just have to. I guess they'll just have to supply us with that information. Yep. But I assume there will be because <clears throat> similar to the building on the corner of Franklin and 27 that's being constructed now, there's those gas light <clears throat> lamps. I think that's what's intended throughout the whole district. That's, that's correct. Should they be intended in front of your building, you're basically agreeing right. to install. Yeah. And, and we're going to have to have conversation with them for the record. You know, uh, my client actually has now acquired also the two parcels adjoining that parcel going uh, further up Hamilton Street, the barber shop and the vacant parcel. So uh, we're in the process of developing plans to even bring that into uh, new construction and compliance with the Hamilton Street Business District. So we'll probably wind up sitting down with Mr. Pappas and reviewing all of that. You'll be seeing us again on the adjoining parcels. I'm sure they'll be, they'll be very happy yeah. here. But the town wants to buy for a parking lot, you said, Jim? <laughs> no, I don't think we're going to make it a parking lot. I think there's the opportunity there, though, to maybe combine the parking lots and have access between the two. So that's... Uh, something we'll be looking at, I think, when that application comes in. Yeah. It's, we, again, we're in a very preliminary stage on that. Then we're looking at all sorts of options. Well, let's move on. I didn't yep. bring that up. Just okay. Um, <coughs> I would like to move to the engineering report very briefly, which is the report. Uh, are you done with Mark's? I don't think Mark had any other. Well, no, I think no. We definitely all those additional site plan comments, columnar form street trees, so yeah, blah blah blah. blah. That's, that's all all right. They're all fine. Yeah. Okay. Mark Mark's report is fine. We're going to comply there's, with everything. There's a few things under the um, compliance with the design standards. Uh, first of all, I have to say it, it was obvious that uh, the architect took the design standards to heart. So uh, definitely commend him for that. I think it's Thank a very attractive building. Um, I do. I did have a, f a few comments or questions um, on the on the left side. Uh, I, had, I had suggested that you consider changing the, the eyebrow features to one with the, the cornice with the brackets replicate the front. One hundred percent agree. So you agree to do that? Okay, that'd be great. I think that would tie the two facades together. Um, a clarification: the wood paneling. What's going underneath the glass on the front? Is that going to be the wood, the wood paneling that's on the side? Uh, correct. Either uh, wood or a composite material that wouldn't rot. Okay. Because but basically, obviously. you're going to wrap it around the front. Yes. Okay. Um, the um, the design standards basically say that you have to have uh, the all sides of the building have to be similarly treated. Um, the right and the rear side elevations are blank. Can you just briefly address why that is? Uh, sure. Actually, by code, you cannot op uh, have any openings uh, that are if you're less than five uh, feet from the property line, un unless it's a protected opening. And we're two feet. We're not allowed less okay. than three feet. Definitely. And the not. building to your right is also right up next to you, and is a few stories in height, I believe. Uh, yes, I believe so. Uh, the building right here to the right side. Yes. Okay. When you so say that's it's so. Blank, what do you mean by that? No well, there's, there's no windows, no, no windows. real <laughs> architectural thing. treatment, but what we're hearing is it's because it's right up next to the property line and there's a building right next to it. Yes, so that's not why they visible. Didn't wrap it around. But the yeah. visible portions will be, will be treated. If we finish, that wall that you're talking about right now, that's got to be a fire rated wall also, correct? That's absolutely right. So that's right. going to be a fire wall. No, no openings. No openings in it, so they can't do anything about that. Okay. Building code. We can't yeah, okay. Well, and, and examination rooms don't need windows, don't want windows. Yeah. Didn't you see that commercial for the tree houses of the kids with the pocket binoculars? <laughs> it's more secure. Okay, just wanted to, again, quickly uh, clarify that. Um, the AC units, HVAC units, so are those going to be roof mounted? Uh, I believe they're going to be roof mounted, and we will screen them and there's a as little, required. You have a little parapet wall, I assume, that would that would screen them, and you're also three stories up, so it's going to be relatively difficult it to see them. It won't be visible, street. but if there's any screening required, we will comply with that. Okay. Definitely. Do you know if um, if the building, if you're going to have security grills or roll-up doors? Because there are some requirements with regard to that. I think they basically have to be on the inside and not on the outside. Uh, I didn't discuss that with, but I think you're, uh, we're okay with the having yep. the grills uh, on the inside. So you, you basically you'll comply with that and yes, okay, and then. Um, they keep OxyContin. They'll want that. Yeah. So and then the last thing, and this is just the sign details need to identify the sign material. So I'm assuming you'll comply with that. Well, we'll comply with that. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then a lot, one other question, I, I suggested that the applicant consider the use of curbing instead of wheel stops. Have you had a chance to? Uh, only because it's an existing paved parking <coughs> lot, we were going to restripe it basically. Uh, 
So you basically, so since it's already there, you're going to leave it the way it is? Uh, yeah, maybe just, uh, you know, code, code, it, code it and restripe it. So I think it's going to be difficult to provide a sidewalk, but if we will, I'll do that in the construction documents. We will, I, I personally would like to have a, a curb, six inch curb, uh, but uh, if, uh, if, if that's going to be the case, we will provide a curb. If not, then we'll provide the wheel stops. But your, you, your client would like to have the wheel stops, basically? We would prefer to leave the wheel stops as proposed. If it can be changed later, we can always, I think that would be an administrative amendment, but we'd like to leave it as proposed okay. at this time. So then other than that, you'll comply with my Everything. Question. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Is this including the... Um, Five-foot buffer with fencing and six-foot evergreen trees along the rear. Along the rear of the property, uh, we do are we are putting up fencing. We're, we're and we're putting up. I think you have box bushes which don't get that high. We we can put something other than that. Obviously, except at the rear of the building where we can't yeah, put anything. Yeah, but clearly, the exposed area. We, we can put some landscaping back that, there. That's an ordinance requirement. Yes. Right, so yeah. Okay. yeah, it's just something, I think, taller than box bushes, but also rather columnar, since you don't have much space there, and you don't want them intruding into the parking area. We, so we will provide ease. Yeah. Sure. Okay. We can. All right, thank you. Uh, speaking thank you. to that area, how do, you, how do you access the dumpster location? How do you get a truck into that? Uh, well, the dumpster will have to be wheeled out. I oh, so you won't back the truck in? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Oh, one other comment. You see where the handicap is and you have the offload, the, uh, the cross-hatched area for the ramp, or for, the, for the access? You have your handicap spot and then you have the eight-foot wide open area. Mm -hmm. Where your entrance door is, especially with the wheel stops, that's going to be almost impossible. For anybody to get in there with a wheelchair. Uh, we discussed that, and uh, we're going to flip the aisle and the handicap oh, right. space so that it's straight. Okay. okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, with respect to the uh, engineering report, and I can, most of the comments are, uh, we will agree to. There's only two issues that I need to discuss very briefly. Uh, one is. Uh, we requested a waiver of a traffic study. Uh, this is a use that's permitted in the zone. Uh, I'm, I guess the board is familiar with Hamilton Street. There are no traffic issues on Hamilton Street. I think to expend the money for a traffic study is probably not necessary or wise uh, expenditure of funds, and I would respectfully request that we not be required to prevent, present a traffic study. Uh, the other issue is on item number two, there were two parts to Mr. Houck's report. One is that we provide site topography on the survey, uh, which we have no problem doing, but for stormwater runoff evaluation, uh, there, this site is 100% impervious. We are actually, quite frankly, reducing the impervious. Uh, I don't think there is under the existing laws of the state, any stormwater management that is required, therefore there should be no stormwater evaluation. This has also been reviewed by the Delaware Raritan Canal Commission. The report has been submitted to the town. They have indicated that, that there is no requirement for stormwater management in their review. They have uh, declined to even review this project because it is 100% impervious before. It's going to remain basically that. So I would want the record to clearly indicate that we're not going to be providing any stormwater information because we don't think it's necessary or appropriate. All of the other comments in his report we will gladly comply with. Where, where does the stormwater go, though? Just into the street source? Yeah. I, I mean, I assume there's gutters, right, or yeah. whatever on the roofs, and they're just, where do they discharge? Just onto the sidewalk and into the street? Into the street. Yeah. Where Pete's beer used to go. Yeah, no, I, I, agree, I agree there's probably no, no point. It's not like you're going to build a natural detention basin. Or We're not required to. No. Yeah, uh, the rest of the staff reports, the health department didn't have any issues, uh, nor did uh, water. Uh, we need to give some information to the storage authority, which we will be happy to do. Uh, so that's the end of my presentation with uh, this witness. Do you have any other witnesses? Call the applicant basically to explain what he's doing on the site. I'll be about two minutes and quite frankly introduce him to the board. 
Well, why didn't you do that now? And well, no, actually, if there are any questions of this current witness, then we'll ask those now, uh, the engineer. Is that uh, well, uh, Mr. Chairman, just yeah. more comment. I would congratulate you. I like your design very much. You honor, even though I'll miss the tower, I know it serves no purpose, but I, it honors the age of the building, which I would put it, you know, someplace between 1875 and 95. So, so it's, uh, uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? No? Um, well, I'd just like to express continuing concern with the parking and if you are acquiring uh, land next to it, I hope there will be more space for parking overall. Uh, Mr. Healy has explained to me that in this case the general requirements of the Hamilton Street Business District apply. If it were somewhere else, we have specific requirements about medical facilities. I think sort of f figuring four employees per per doctor, really, per office suite. Uh, I think that this use will have more employees than a more normal retail establishment would be would be likely to, particularly if you have uh, three stories there. Plus, you know, you come to the doctor and you sit and wait. You accumulate par people in parking lots that way. Now, I know there's, there's nothing more you can do on this property. Uh, if you could make an arrangement for staff to park somewhere else nearby, to make this lot more available for patients, I think that would would help. Yeah. Dr. Chase, and I, I really, and I don't want to editorialize, I, I do think there were a couple of projects where money is going to be coming into the town uh, under the ordinance because parking has not been provided. Uh, and, and I also see, quite frankly, in my office a little bit more activity where people are having an interest in redeveloping Hamilton Street. And you're going to see a couple of other applications. And I, and I really do think maybe it's sort of the council or, or the planning board needs to start to really figure out what they're going to do about taking this money and providing some municipal parking there because hopefully this, this will help revitalize that area. And I think it's really something that I think if, if we wait significantly longer, property values then start to go up in that area, and you're going to wind up maybe paying more for a property to put a parking lot in than you would at this earlier stage of the game. So uh, again, it's, it's something that you... Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that, and I think it's something I, mean, I can bring up to the council, the Hamilton Street Business District can bring up to the council. Uh, I think we do need the parking one way or another. I wouldn't want to have business owners in the immediate vicinity complaining that people can't get to their business because uh, the patients at the medical facility are taking up all the parking spaces. Well, you know, that actually might be a, great, a good thing to have happen because then it might spur some action. Because, I mean, what, what can this applicant do? You have the parking on space, on site that you have. The township has established the ordinance that if you can't provide all the parking on site, you pay into this fund. Now it's incumbent upon the municipality to, discuss, to uh, provide the parking. We can editorialize all we want and we'll change that. I mean, we need, to, we need to, as a township, do that. And, you know, who's the councilman up there, right? Carl? He, he's, good, uh, he's, good, he's, good at, he's good at getting large open spaces built, like turf fields. So this is very <laughs> similar to that. <laughs> all right, let's go on. Uh, let's, uh, do we have the next witness? Can we open the public, because he's got to go to another meeting. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. We can, we, we'll can. we do this like oh, the yeah. zoning board. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that we open the meeting to the public on uh, this application. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Anybody from the public uh, yes. with comments on this application for this particular witness can come forward. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, seeing no one coming forward, I would move that this public hearing be closed. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck up in Morris. Thanks. All right. Hopefully they're as nice as we are.
<laughs> Mr. Roddy. Assembly swear for him to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Your name, sir. Dean Addy. Can you spell your last name for the record? A D I. You can have a seat, Mr. Addy. Mr. Addy, you are the sole principal in the, in the applicant uh, LLC 507 Hamilton Street. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And you purchased this property fairly recently? Correct. In uh, early January. Okay. Uh, can you give the board a little bit of a a background, your, your personal background, what business you're in and what do you do? And uh, Absolutely. So um, I grew up in Edison, New Jersey uh, for my whole life. Um, later I went to pharmacy school at Rutgers University, actually right up the street from, uh, from, from this facility. Um, uh, so I'm a pharmacist by profession. Um, I currently work for uh, Walmart. Uh, I began as a pharmacist there and have since developed to be the regional manager of healthcare recruiting uh, for Walmart in the Northeast. Uh, in addition to that, I also work as a per diem pharmacist at St. Peter's University Hospital uh, every third weekend. And uh, what is your vision for this building? What, when you bought the property, what do you intend to do? And can you explain how, how this thing ultimately will work out uh, as your vision for not only the pharmacy, but the medical offices and, and if there's a specific focus? Uh, absolutely. So. Um, uh, for many years, I'd, I'd always drive up and down Hamilton Street, and I always noticed how that particular area was without a pharmacy because that was my profession. Um, and I'd always had um, the vision to one day own my own. Um, I think this particular area is, uh, has a lot of underserved patients when it comes to health care. There's a lot of foot traffic. Um, and being in St. Peter's and having spent time in Robert Wood Johnson Hospital, there's a lot of uh, primary care that's going to the ER. Um, so I'm hopeful that um, by providing access to care at this site, we can get primary care out of the ER. We can serve the community. Um, uh, we're hoping to have uh, the right combination of physicians, um, you know, a pediatrician, an OBGYN, a, a primary care doctor, a, you know, whatever we can achieve. Um, uh, in addition to that, there used to be immediately across the street from uh, this building, a uh, medicine shop pharmacy. It's currently um, transformed into, a, I think, like a Jamaican restaurant. Um, but I, what I was told was that uh, medicine shop pharmacy was purchased by the Rite Aid up the street. Um, so for many years, they had a successful pharmacy in that location and um, now does not. Thank you. I have no further questions. Any comments or questions from the board? Okay. I Whoa, Ted, go ahead. Well, I would say this, uh, this is exactly the sort of operation that we'd like to see come in. Council has been talking about the desirability of attracting medical uses to this part of of Hamilton Street both to serve an underserved population and to make connections with Robert Wood Johnson and St. Peter's, St. Peter's perhaps being even nearer, uh, to begin to have medical related development in uh, along Hamilton Street as a way to increase foot traffic in general for the existing businesses and generally raise the tone of things. So, you know, Apart from my concerns about parking, I'm very pleased to see this application. And I know there is a, a lot across Hamilton Street very nearby, which I think a prior applicant on a neighboring property was talking about buying spaces in that for, for their facility, which has not gone ahead. So that's a you know, sort of a moot point. But, and as Mr. Lanford says, maybe the township can buy that lot. If we have enough money, it's probably cheaper to buy a parking lot than to buy an existing building. I just hope Rite Aid won't come and muscle you out. <laughs> I, ho I hope they don't either. <laughs> just uh, real quick, Mr. Chairman, just to um, 
echo what uh, Dr. Chase just said. I've been working with the Hamilton Street uh, Business Community Corporation uh, over the last year in their efforts to try to revitalize uh, Hamilton Street. And they recognize the exact same opportunity in Hamilton Street, you know, the, the proximity to New Brunswick, to the hospitals, mm -hmm. and trying to bring in uses just like this. Um, and pretty much as we, these discussions were going on, Mr. Addy materialized uh, with this application. So uh, I think it's definitely going to help Hamilton Street. Thank um, you. And, and just a, a comment, it's a, in a very premature conversation, but because I work um, at St. Peter's University Hospital, I you know, have shared uh, my thoughts on this building with the director of the pharmacy. And um, he was really excited to, the director of pharmacy for the hospital, and he was really excited to, to learn about it. Um, he felt that um, because St. Peter's is a children's hospital, um, sometimes it's very difficult to find those specialized medications that they, pre that they prescribe um, at other pharmacies. Um, and so we'll do our level best to carry those medications so that those children can have access um, uh, to those uh, meds. In addition to that, he has connected me with um, the chief information officer of the hospital who after having a conversation with him um, was interested in having further conversations to see if we could perhaps get some St. Peter's doctors um, in this building. Um, but again, without having any um, uh, approval to know whether we could move forward, we haven't really gone very far with that conversation. I think that's excellent. And as a retired pharmacist here in, uh, in fact, where I practiced was on Easton Avenue, uh, I did a lot of compounding of pediatric solutions uh, for the pharmacies. Uh, and uh, one of the problems they had was particularly with uh, low-income people. They had to find a pharmacy and get the medication before they would even release the baby from the hospital. And particularly on weekends, uh, that put a hardship on some of the parents. And I know I stayed late many a time to, to help those parents out. So there is a definite need in this area for what you're describing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish you a lot of success. I, I uh, really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Chairman, if I could, I'd just like to add my good wishes as well. And uh, one thing is that New Brunswick as a, has been revitalizing and growing both the, the availability of office space uh, at, at any kind of price is getting very difficult to find. And the one thing about parking is that it's worse in the city of New Brunswick uh, <laughs> than, in, than in Franklin. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Well, with, with that, I, I don't think we need to reopen the public. So, uh, any final thoughts? Uh, none, Mr. Chairman. I think we can move on. Okay. Um, let me entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Councilman Chase. Yes. Mr. LaCourt. Yes. Ms. MacGyver. Yes. Mr. Matler. Yes. Mr. Pettit. Yes. Mr. Stevens. Yes. Chairman Orsini. Yes. Thank you very much. And best of luck. I have one more, but can I take a two-minute break, please? Uh, yeah, actually, why don't we just do a bio break until uh, 9 o'clock, five okay. minutes. Okay, sounds good. tend to do, and can you explain how, how this thing ultimately will work out uh, as your vision for not only the pharmacy, but the medical offices, and, and if there's a specific focus? Uh, absolutely. So, um, uh, for many years, I'd, I'd always drive up and down Hamilton Street, and I always noticed how that particular area was without a pharmacy because that was my profession. Um, and I'd always had um, the vision to one day own my own. Um, I think this particular area is, uh, has a lot of underserved patients when it comes to healthcare. There's a lot of foot traffic. Um, and being in St. Peter's and having spent time in Robert Wood Johnson Hospital, there's a lot of uh, primary care that's going to the ER. Um, so I'm hopeful that um, by providing access to care at this site, we can get primary care out of the ER. We can serve the community. Um, uh, we're hoping to have uh, the right combination of physicians, um, you know, a pediatrician, an OBGYN, a, a primary care doctor, uh, you know, whatever we can achieve. Um, uh, 
in addition to that, there used to be immediately across the street from uh, this building a uh, medicine shop pharmacy. It's currently um, transformed into, a, I think, like a Jamaican restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, but I, what I was told was that um, medicine shop pharmacy was purchased by the Rite Aid up the street. Um, <coughs> So for many years, they had a successful pharmacy in that location and um, now does not. Thank you. I have no further questions. Any comments or questions from the board? Okay. I oh, Ted, go ahead. I would say this, uh, this is exactly the sort of operation that we'd like to see come in. Council has been talking about the desirability of attracting medical uses to this part of, of Hamilton Street, both to serve an underserved population and to make connections with Robert Wood Johnson and St. Peter's, St. Peter's perhaps being even nearer. Uh, to begin to have medical related development in uh, along Hamilton Street as a way to increase foot traffic in general for the existing businesses and generally raise the tone of things. So, you know, apart from my <laughs> concerns about parking, I'm very pleased to see this application. And I know there is a, a lot across Hamilton Street very nearby, which I think a prior applicant on a neighboring property was talking about buying spaces in that for for their facility, which has not gone ahead. So that's a you know, sort of a moot point. But And as Mr. Lanford says, maybe the township can buy that lot. If we have enough money, it's probably cheaper to buy a parking lot than to buy an existing building. I just hope Rite Aid won't come and muscle you out. <laughs> I, ho I hope they don't either. <laughs> just uh, real quick, Mr. Chairman, just to um, echo what uh, Dr. Chase just said. I've been working with the Hamilton Street uh, Business Community Corporation uh, over the last year in their efforts to try to revitalize uh, Hamilton Street. And they recognize the exact same opportunity in Hamilton Street, you know, the, the proximity to New Brunswick, to the hospitals, mm -hmm. and trying to bring in uses just like this. Um, and pretty much as we, these discussions were going on, Mr. Addy materialized uh, with this application. So uh, I think it's definitely going to help Hamilton Street. Thank um, you. And just a, a comment. It's a, in a very premature conversation, but because I work um, at St. Peter's University Hospital, I you know, have shared uh, my thoughts on this building with the director of the pharmacy. And um, he was really excited to, the director of pharmacy for the hospital, and he was really excited to, to learn about it. Um, he felt that um, because St. Peter's is a children's hospital, um, sometimes it's very difficult to find those specialized medications that they, that they prescribe um, at other pharmacies. Um, and so we'll do our level best to carry those medications so that those children can have access um, uh, to those uh, meds. In addition to that, he has connected me with um, the chief information officer of the hospital, who after having a conversation with him, um, was interested in having further conversations to see if we could perhaps get some St. Peter's doctors um, in this building. Um, but again, without having any um, uh, approval to know whether we could move forward, we haven't really gone very far with that conversation. I think that's excellent, and as a retired pharmacist here in uh, in fact, where I practiced was on Easton Avenue. Uh, I did a lot of compounding of pediatric solutions uh, for the pharmacies. Uh, and uh, one of the problems they had was particularly with uh, low-income people. They had to find a pharmacy and get the medication before they would even release the baby from the hospital. And particularly on weekends, uh, that put a hardship on some of the parents. And I know I stayed late many a time to, to help those parents out. So there is a definite need in this area for what you're describing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish you a lot of success. I, I uh, really appreciate that. Thank you very much. 
Well, Mr. Chairman, if I could, I'd just like to add my good wishes as well. And uh, one thing is that New Brunswick, as he has been revitalizing and growing both the the availability of office space uh, at, at any kind of price is getting very difficult to find. And the one thing about parking is that it's worse in the city of New Brunswick uh, <laughs> than, in, than in Franklin. So, good luck. Thank you. Okay. Well, with, with that, I, I don't think we need to reopen the public. So, uh, any final thoughts? Uh, none, Mr. Chairman. I think we can move on. Okay. Um, let me entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Councilman Chase. Yes. Mr. LaCourt. Yes. Ms. MacGyver. Yes. Mr. Mettler. Yes. Mr. Pettit. Yes. Mr. Stevens. Yes. Chairman Orsini. Yes. Thank you very much. And best of luck. I have one more, but can I take a two-minute break, please? Uh, yeah. Actually, why don't we just do a bio break until uh, 9 o'clock, five okay. minutes. Okay, so okay, everyone, we're going to reconvene with our last hearing of the night. <clears throat> Once again, by the esteemed Mr. Lanford, it's Melmid Construction, PLN 120010. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Peter Lanford appearing on behalf of the applicant. Um, this is an application to develop the intersection of Route 27 and South Dover Avenue. Um, there are four lots in question. Uh, two of the lots are currently owned by one individual by the name of Eric Cohn, which are lots 24 and 25. Lots 26 and 27 are owned by a gentleman by the name of Joseph Levy. Mr. Cohn has owned lot 24 lots 24 and 25 since the year 2007. Uh, Mr. Levy owned the other parcel since 2006. The lots 24 and 25 currently have on that property a building. That building has not been inhabited or used for many, many, many years. Uh, in about 2009 or 2010, I appeared before this board on behalf of Mr. Cohn uh, to develop that building. And actually, we did receive an approval to uh, rehab that building into a two-family house. At the same time we were here, many of the board members uh, expressed to me and to my client Boy, we sure like to get that corner cleaned up, uh, lots 26 and 27, which is basically has, has been used as a used car lot for many years. And, and the board had indicated a desire that that corner be cleaned up. Uh, Mr. Cohn and Mr. Levy have since joined forces, uh, and this application is to combine those two lots, uh, eliminate all of the structures on those two properties, to, and it is our intent to uh, develop four townhouses. Uh, we also, in trying to put a plan together and, and uh, consistent with uh, discussions I had with Mr. Healy and other uh, people in the township, uh, felt it would have been nice if we perhaps took out our neighbor to the right, as you're looking at the property on lot 20.01, uh, which is an existing commercial business owned by uh, Mr. Weber. Uh, we did contact. Why he isn't in here? Uh, well, uh, but we attempted to also acquire that property on more than one occasion over the last couple of years because he, we felt it was the most prudent thing to do all of that. And uh, at, at least as of today, that ain't happening. So we have what we have. Uh, having said that, I will call Mr. Ford as my first witness. I have uh, Mr. Ford and the architect. Uh, the staff reports in this application are very benign uh, in that we've met with staff on more than one occasion to develop this plan that is before the board. Uh, but there are many existing variances uh, that exist with respect to these properties that I need to review with you. Um, most of those are going to go away or be made better and we will describe what we are proposing and the variances that we need with respect to the proposed project. Mr. Ford? Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth about the truth? Yes, I do. Michael Ford, F-O-R-D. 
Yeah, I, I don't. I don't need to. I've hear appeared. Mr. Ford's policy. No mercy. Okay. Mr. Ford, you've already uh, marked two exhibits which uh, you prepared in conjunction with this application. One is an existing conditions plan, and the other is the proposed site plan. Uh, I would like you to go to the exhibit A1 that you have previously marked, and can you please indicate to the board? Uh, describe both of the properties, what's on the properties, and what current variances exist or nonconformities exist with respect to the subject properties. Okay. Yeah, the uh, exhibit I have on the easel is marked A1. It's the existing conditions plan, sheet two from the site plan set that was uh, submitted as part of the application. Uh, the properties at the intersection of South Dover Avenue and Route 27. It's a basically a 100 by 100 lot. Uh, there's actually right now four tax map lots uh, that I'm tracing now uh, that run front to back from Route 27, each about 25 feet wide. Um, there's the two parcels, lots 26 and 27, uh, right at the immediate intersection. Uh, they are the used car lot. Uh, if you will, that was described as part of the application opening uh, statement. You'll see that that's uh, basically entirely 100% impervious coverage uh, with uh, three small structures that facilitate that current use. Um, to the uh, east is the uh, next two lots with the existing building. It's a barn red building that's on the property now up close to Route 27. They're existing now eight non-conformities uh, on the site. Uh, the building I just uh, referenced is, you can see, virtually on the front uh, property line. So there's virtually no or zero front yard setback at this current time. It also is virtually on the side yard, so there's virtually no side yard setback. So that's a non-compliant condition. Uh, those same uh, non-compliant conditions uh, exist today on the a used car dealership lot where the front yard setback is not met by the existing structure nor is the side yard setback and that's immediately adjacent to our residential neighbors to the north okay. and with the proposed plan which you have marked as exhibit a2 uh, we are going to start by demolishing everything that's out there correct correct okay and can you go over what we are proposing uh, on the subject property with on A2, uh, describe that and any variances that may be attendant to the plan that we are proposing and how we have made the non-conforming or pre-existing variances better in all instances? Yes. <coughs> okay. Um, the uh, sec second exhibit, A2, is a a colored rendering of the site plan sheet number three that was submitted as part of the application overlaid with the proposed landscaping which I believe is sheet four so you can see the the uh, proposed condition in its built out form it's uh, uh, our our proposal is to eliminate the driveway that currently exists on route 27 so there'll be no direct driveway access out to route 27 that's a non-desirable uh, condition that's uh, an improvement with the proposed condition. Uh, there'll be a, a parking lot to the rear of the four townhouse units which will front or face Route 27, and that access will be gained from South Dover Avenue. There's six parking spaces in that uh, parking lot with uh, garages in each of the four units for a total of 10 parking spaces. Uh, the building itself you can see is more centrally located on the site so that we uh, comply with the front yard setback from uh, South Dover Avenue. We comply with the side yard setback to our residential neighbors to the north. We uh, are proposing an eight foot side yard setback to our existing commercial neighbors to the east. <clears throat> the existing condition as I indicated on uh, exhibit A1 is virtually on the side yard setback. So we're moving, the, the, the new building is moved farther away from uh, that side yard. And then uh, with respect to the front yard setback on uh, the Route 27 frontage, the 
um, building itself, the superstructure, and that's highlighted in brown here, uh, will comply with the 20 yards, uh, 20 foot front yard setback. But however, the ordinance requires that the setback be measured from any uh, covered areas. And there are covered porches over each of the front doorway entrances to the buildings. So there is a technical variance for the uh, front yard setback to the unit closest to South Dover. But you can see, because of the geometry of the site, as we move uh, to the west, these front porches actually become compliant with the front yard setback. Okay. Now, with our proposed plan, uh, we have to deal with issues of lighting, refuse, stormwater management, and other things. Can you take the board through, and also landscaping, what we are proposing to do to this site uh, to, to make it uh, the townhouse project that we are envisioning? Okay. Um, right now, as we described in the existing condition, it's uh, virtually fully developed. There are some trees along the perimeter of the property that will be preserved as part of the application. With regards to proposed landscaping, we're providing for street trees along the frontage as required by the ordinance, some foundation plantings as well as ornamental trees. And then uh, there's a small uh, recycling trash enclosure area immediately adjacent to the parking lot that will be surrounded by shrubbery. And uh, with regards to impervious coverage, the maximum allowable is 60%. We comply with that uh, restriction. And there's only a slight increase in impervious coverage. The existing condition is about 50%. We're going to about 59% impervious coverage. So we do uh, comply with, uh, as Mr. Um, Lanford said, we had meetings with your staff, one of those Quest was for some on-site stormwater management, and we've uh, been able to achieve that by some small underground detention facility in the parking area that is then connected to uh, proposed storm drainage improvements that connect to existing uh, drainage facilities in South Dover Avenue. And right now, there is no stormwater management on that site? That's correct. Okay. Are there any fencing proposed along the rear of the property abutting the residential neighbor? Yes, we're proposing a... Uh, a board on board fence, uh, as we'll go through in a moment, one of the staff comments is to make that a solid uh, fence without gaps in it, as opposed to a alternating board on board fence, and we'll uh, comply with that request. Okay. Are we proposing any lighting on the subject property? Yes. In the parking lot area, there are uh, light poles uh, being proposed for lighting. Okay. And uh, again, not jumping ahead to the staff reports, one of the staff reports wants us to uh, relocate or to handle some light, uh, light spillage that is on, on the present plan, and we will be able to accommodate that? Correct. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, If I could, uh, sure. there are just a couple of questions that the plan, well, one, the plan has drawn my mind. Uh, are these to be uh, for sale units or are they to be rental units? At this juncture, they're going to be townhouses that can either be sold, and if they can't be sold, they probably would then be rented, but they are intended to be for sale units, but uh, can be rented. Uh, well, then they would have to have a sort of association. I would think to handle questions of the parking lot, the dumpster, etc. Uh, ex absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um, I guess my second question um, just has to do with the fact that this property is within the redevelopment area, uh, which um, lends a kind of jeopardy to to projects. Uh, are you planning to go to the redevelopment agency? Yes, we intend to come and visit you fairly shortly. We actually have uh, the applications prepared uh, to be named designated redeveloper. Uh, interestingly enough, this client also uh, owns some additional properties along Route 27 on the other side of South Dover. And right now we're mulling over ideas to maybe come in and be designated redeveloper for additional properties, including 
this one. So uh, we do know that if somebody else applies to be designated redeveloper uh, for this project or this site, our project would be in jeopardy. The likelihood of that happening is probably almost nil, but uh, we will be coming to the redevelopment agency sometime in the near future. Uh, Mr. Lamford, I would agree that the likelihood is nil and mm. you're probably safe, but still I just did want to bring it up. Yeah, we're, we are aware of that. Okay, thank you. I know you like to see me all over the place. Um, Mr. Ford, uh, there were some staff reports generated in conjunction with this application, is that correct? Correct. Okay, and uh, there, Mr. Healy's report um, identifies also uh, there's an additional variance other than the ones we talked about, and that is a height variance uh, in that we have a three-story building, but the building does comply with the height requirements of the zone, does it not? That's correct. Okay, and, and the variances that we are seeking, uh, you are, in addition to being a uh, professional engineer, you are also a professional planner? Correct. And you've testified before this board and other boards in that capacity? Yes, I have. Uh, can you, uh, first of all, in order to satisfy the, the legal requirements and the questions raised by Mr. Healy, uh, opine as to the grant of the variances that we are seeking this evening? Yes. Um, in addition to the variances I've already uh, outlined, there are some C1 hardship variances regarding the uh, re minimum required lot size for a townhouse development such as this in accordance with the ordinance, as well as a minor uh, lot frontage variance where 100 feet is required and 99.17 feet is the existing and proposed condition of the uh, lot frontage on South Dover Avenue. Uh, as I've uh, outlined in my testimony already, uh, the other uh, variances we are seeking with regards to uh, front and side yard setbacks, I uh, believe the proposed condition is a substantial improvement to the existing condition and uh, would not have a substantial detriment to any of our surrounding neighbors, in fact, would uh, improve the condition because we become more compliant. The remaining comments in Mr. Healy's report we can comply with, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, just to clarify, comment number four is more of a not whether you can comply with it, but whether it's going to remain or not. Oh, it's coming down. Okay. Right. I'm sorry. It There's one in disrepair, and, and that'll be clarified on the plan to uh, be removed. Okay. Um, the Health Department Sewage Authority we have to meet with, but there, there are no issues. We've discussed all the variances. You've reviewed the report of Mr. Hauk, uh, and he has 17 comments. We only take exception to one comment, is that correct? Yes. And that is item number 11? Yes. Okay, and can you indicate why we take exception? Okay. Uh, item number 11 is to provide a requ it's a, it states, provide a required handicapped parking space. Um, our next win witness will be the architect. Uh, in accordance, it's my understanding, in accordance with the building code, this type of use and these units are not required to be accessible. They're not going to be accessible units. Uh, so uh, any handicapped parking space that we provide would be for units that aren't accept, ex accessible. Um, and then also, in accordance with the residential site improvement standards, under the parking requirements within the residential site improvement standards, it states that if a building is not required to be accessible by the building code, then handicapped parking spaces are not required. Uh, so we'll uh, point this out to Mr. Hauk. Um, all that said, uh, if we were to provide a handicapped parking space on site, it wouldn't be in addition to the 10 we have already. We would convert one of the 10, that is one of the six parking lot spaces to a handicapped space that for all intents and purposes, from a practical standpoint, uh, without handicap <coughs> access to the buildings would become a non-usable space and would more likely become an attractive nu nuisance where it would either have people parking in it illegally or be uh, used for some other unintended purpose. And, and we can provide to Mr. Hauk the data or the, the, the paperwork indicating that 
uh, the, the handicap space is in fact not required. Is that correct? Correct. Sorry, I had a question that related to something you said earlier about uh, light spillage. So is that related to lights in the parking area? Yes. So uh, what is what are the height of those lights going to be? So I would imagine that since it's now a residential use, they need not be. They're 14 feet high. Okay, that's not that high. No, and we've already uh, looked at ways of just shifting, and it was minor. It was like, you know, 0.2 foot candles. A minor spillage onto our neighbor, our residential neighbor to the north. Well, they shielded. I mean, and that was shielded. But the parking lot is five feet off the parking, off the uh, property line. So being so close, mm. uh, but we've already uh, worked with our lighting consultant where we can shift those park those parking area light fixtures such that the spillage will be zero. Okay. Any more reports? I have. Yeah, there, there are no other reports. I have no further questions. What about the taxes and water payments since everything's delinquent? If, if they are delinquent, I'll make sure they're paid immediately mm -hmm. by Mr. Ford. He's agreed to pay them. <laughs> hey, on your <laughs> ground level. That's not uh, an accurate statement by Mr. Lanford. <laughs> on your ground level plan, you have an area that says mechanical on it. Does that include laundry facilities? That, we, we have another that oh, wait for him. Okay. Architect, yeah. <laughs> there be no mechanical facilities in the be, before we before we move on to the architect. However, are there any other questions for Mr. Ford? At this juncture, Ted. So you're going to have what are at least designated as front doors opening onto Route 27. Correct. Well, if I were going to live there, I would like to have a fence along Route 27 with a gate perhaps, but a gate that can be closed and perhaps by night locked. It's just so accessible to whoever. For security. My, my client is nodding yes. Now, I just think it, it would be a positive factor for selling the units to have such. Don't want to make it too high, but, but we can do something to at least yeah, achieve your intent and still make it attractive. I, I don't yeah, yeah, it still wants to be attractive, but something to at least strongly discourage attacks on the front door by night. We, 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 can, we can come up with something. Anything else for Mr. Ford? This juncture. Uh, just to one, to one, I guess the architect will deal with it. Uh, as far as the handicap spot or requirement or not having a requirement, you're going to present evidence to Mr. Hout that proves him wrong. Is that what you told me? Correct. Okay. The only reason I asked you is I went on the line today and I, looked, I went in through the code, the state requirements, and there's nothing there that exempts it. Uh, the yeah. units from being accessible? That, that would exempt be it. Okay. I, I'm common sense would tell you if you don't have an if you don't have an accessible unit, it's kind of crazy you have to have to have an accessible parking space. Yeah. And, and, but it doesn't say that in the in the, not I'm not talking about Franklin, I'm talking about the, the code of the state of New Jersey, chapter five, or the architect or chapter seven, chapter seven of this code. It doesn't specifically. Yeah, there is it, a section. Pardon? There is a section. That what does what? So he'll, he'll testify. No, oh, okay. All right. I'll, be, I'll, read, I'll leave it yeah. for the architect. Leave it for okay. the architect. Okay. Yeah, it's an architectural. Yeah. As long as you can prove it to him, I don't know. Yeah, and, and, and the so bottom line, Jim, if, if we are required to have it, we can create it. I mean, it's not the question of we can't do it. We don't think. No, there's room to do it. There's room the to only, do the it. The only other issue is it depended on what you were going to do. You said, like, if I'm, if I'm going to sell a townhouse as a, as a fee simple, I buy it, then I don't want the handicap spot to buy a townhouse. But if he's going to keep it in his own name and use it as a, like he's a landlord, then that might have a different view of whether you're required to have that or not. It makes sense one way or the other. Okay. You, you got to know what the ownership is. Right. All right. Go ahead. Raise your right hand, sir. It's always swear or firm to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Your name? Uh, Mike Winkler. And your profession? Architect. A license in the state of New Jersey? Yes. Accepted. Thank you. Mr. Winkler, uh, first of all, you prepared an exhibit to basically indicate to the board what 
the four units that we are proposing are going to look like. Correct. Uh, have we marked that yet? Yes, it's marked A3. Okay. Can you br briefly go through all the elevations to show what the units will look like, and then we'll go to the interior of the units, and then we'll talk about parking. Sure. Uh, this would be the front elevation that faces Route 27. Uh, what we did was try to, one of the comments originally, there was it was much larger in scale, more of a, thir a third story. Uh, what we tried to do is break down the roof to give it a uh, two and a half story look on the front with some raised areas that would be, looks like dormers, but in actuality is a third floor, but it brings the scale of this down a little bit and also extended out porches, which was also a suggestion um, to make it a little friendlier from the front. Uh, whether people that were residing there would actually enter through the front, probably not. There's entrances also in the back, as you can see on the rear elevation here and that goes in through the garage. So people coming home would be parking, going in, probably going in this way. Uh, the suggestion of the fence, uh, fence, I think, is actually very, that's probably a very good idea. Uh, probably we could either do something with a low picketish type fence to make it look a little more residential. Uh, Color-wise uh, and material-wise, we were looking at doing something with a cultured stone a Wayne's coat along the bottom, and then some areas that would be full stone along the back, and then the rest would be a uh, probably a vinyl siding, uh, and then we would go with a um, white, either white metal or an Azac, uh, which is a composite board um, for the trim, and then again we'd do a, a uh, roof to match the siding, uh, probably a variegated brown. So. Uh, and that's in this in this version, uh, and we show some uh, maroonish shutters on this one. But again, that could be to the owner's uh, liking. Um, rear rear elevation, we do have the garage doors. Then there's residential entrances here, and then they're all, they are all covered, so they all have the covered entrance. Uh, there's also a little extension over top of the uh, over top of the garages. Um, and as well as some decorative columns on the exterior. And can you briefly uh, describe the interior of the units? Sure. We can mark this A4, which is, I believe, a plan that you have in your packets already. We have the uh, ground level, which is basically garage and mechanical area with stairs up. The first floor consists of an open area, which is kitchen, family room, and a half bath. And then there is the bedrooms on the second floor, two bedrooms, and a bathroom, full bathroom. The bottom plan here is just basically how the plan would be put together. So it, uh, same plan, but flip-flopped, basically. <laughs> so for the record, all of these are two bedroom units? Correct. OK, and therefore the parking requirements both uh, are meet the RSIS standards for parking for these units? Correct. Uh, and there was a question about the mechanical room. Well, yeah, if there are going to be hookups for a washer and dryer somewhere. Uh, we had actually discussed that with the owner, and uh, they were actually looking, because it's a lar fairly large room, we were looking to try and get everything in there, which would include, include washer and dryer in there, or a washer-dryer combo, which would be more of a stand-up. Okay, unit. that's good. Okay. And, and the approximate size of each of these units, I... Uh, I believe it's about 542 square feet per unit footprint, okay, which so equates to about 1626 for the entire footprint of the building. And that includes the garage, obviously. So Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And did you also, as requested, I think, by Mr. Healy in his report, bring some of the material samples? Yes, we did. We have a couple samples here, which are a vinyl siding which would be a, like a four inch lap siding. Then oh, a very heavy piece of stone, <laughs> which is that color there. And then with white trim. Can you hold it up so we can see? Sure, sure. So that's a, a variegated, it has some grays and some tans in it. And then we were also looking at something along these lines. Thank you. Okay. And it, now going to the question that Mr. Pettit raised in the issue of the parking, uh, can you shed some light on there that issue? Uh, there is a section in the uh, UCC that exempts townhouses. So I think you're, 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 you're... I couldn't find it. But okay. Right, your point about 
ownership though might fall into yeah, play that, there. Yeah, that's correct. the issue, really. Right. So it's basically there is an exemption, but for townhouses. So if it's an apartment, no, it has to have have the access. Yeah, I, I saw it in the apartments. I couldn't find the townhouse exemption. Right. Yeah, yeah. I have the number. All right. Um, well, if you take it up with yep. Carl, then okay. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I was to make sure I wasn't losing my mind. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I almost missed it too. <laughs> they will have. Some. Thank you. I have no further questions of this witness. Any other questions from the board on this for this witness? Just, uh, one question, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the uh, floor plans have been significantly revised compared to what was originally um, uh, presented. Uh, staff had some concerns about uh, s certain areas on the previous plans having the potential to be converted to additional bedrooms. Um, in my opinion, you've addressed those comments with these new plans. And I'm assuming you wouldn't object to a condition that basically you can't deviate in any significant manner from the floor plans that are being presented to the board. That is correct. We, we presented the, the plans. Is, what we're building, what we showed you is what we're building, and we cannot, will okay. not deviate. The site is relatively tight. Um, you do have enough parking per the ordinance, but if the buildings were not used exactly as drawn. So that was, so, but you've addressed that, so I just want to make sure for the record. Not a problem, All right, Mr. Thank you. Healy. I buy a unit. He sells me a unit. They never see it again. I decide to put up two partitions and move people in. It could happen. So do you want that in the deed? Do, do you have any objection to that? I have no objection to that. No, then you don't have to worry about it. <coughs> That's a good point. I still do it. It'd just be a little more. <laughs> <laughs> At least that way somebody has some enforcement capability. Okay. Um, well, I think we should be open to the public. Just make a motion that we open to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody from the public wishing to speak on this application, come forward. Mr. Chairman, seeing no one coming forward on this application, I would move its public hearing to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Summation? Just, just very briefly on this one. I, I, again, we, what we were started with uh, was a, a bad situation, and, and quite frankly, because of the board's urgings, I think we've come up with a plan uh, that I think is, is going to substantially clean up those lots. There are variances that we need, uh, but quite frankly, the variances that we are eliminating are far greater, and the conditions that we are eliminating are far greater than what we are providing. I, I think uh, this will be an enhancement to the area. If the Somerset Douglas site, which is starting to move, starts to move further down the street, I think uh, that part of the redevelopment area is well on its way to recovering that side of the street. And again, uh, my client does have some additional properties which we are exploring to also redevelop in that area. So uh, this is just a start, and we thank the board for their time and their patience. Okay. Thank you, Peter. <coughs> so entertain a motion. Make a motion. We approve the application. Second. Councilman Chase? Yes. Mr. Co LaCourt? Yes. Mr. McIver? Yes. Mr. Mettler? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Chairman Orsini? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Now we have a minute. Okay, so we'll uh, circle back around to the uh, I think, uh, beginning of our meeting and uh, start with the minutes of April 17th, 2013. Make a motion that we approve if there's no discussion. I will second. Mr. LaCourt, where'd he go? We're still, uh, we're still meeting, just in no, case. I, I want to know, know, know that. The minutes. Voting on the minutes. Mr. LaCourt? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Chairman Orsini? Yes. Okay, resolutions. We have four. We'll begin with the Jane Center PLN 1300013. For all of these, listen fairly carefully for your name since there are some uh, resolutions with no votes. There are some resolutions where people weren't here. Yeah, so let, not me, everybody votes on everything. I'll, I'll point out for each one who's uh, this one Councilman Chase, Ms. MacGyver, Mr. Mettler, Mr. Pettit, Mr. Stevens, and Chairman Arsini can vote. Okay, so um, I will make a motion for the Jane Center one then. Second. Councilman Chase. Yes. Mr. LaCourt. Yes. Mr. Mettler. 
Yeah. Mr. Pettit, Mr. Stevens, Chairman yeah. Rossini. Yes. Route 27 School, LLP, PLN 13-00005. Mr. L Mr. LaCourt. Well, hold on. Mr. Make a motion to approve. Mr. Giver, Mr. Pettit, and Mr. Stevens can vote. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. LaCourt. Yes. Mr. Giver. Yes. Mr. Pettit. Mr. Stevens. Yes. Hey, Franklin Board of Ed. We have Mr. Mr. LaCourt, Mr. Mettler, Mr. Pettit, Mr. Stevens, and the Chairman. I'll make a motion. Second. Mr. LaCourt. Yes. Mr. Mettler. Yes. Mr. Pettit. Mr. Stevens. Yes. Chairman Arsini. Yeah. Do we do we have any anybody with any phones or anything near the microphones or any buzzing interference? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. Um, I thought I was here for the April meeting. I may not be listed. For but which? I, I well. seem to remember the school, <laughs> and and uh, I think I voted against it. Which you did. May be why my name wasn't called. That's you voted against it. That's why you. Well, according to the minutes of April seventeenth, you were here. Yeah, but you voted against but it. Voted but you against voted against it. Yeah. That's why you didn't get to vote for the Right, right. But, but but I didn't get to vote on the minutes, I don't believe. No, I, ca I called your name, didn't I? You I were here. You were definitely here. If I didn't call your name, I apologize. Okay, I vote for it. Yeah. What the hell is that? I turned his iPad off. No, I'm not annoyed. It stopped. Did they, did they take one of the microphones with them? No. They're both. Maybe it's this one. I just it's yours. It's yeah. yours. Yeah. The offending microphone has been found. I don't know what the heck it is. Mm. Well, it's like most things. You can turn it off, turn it on again, works. Um, okay, where were we? Uh, Reno, uh, did we do Frank? Did we all vote on that yet? Yes, you didn't okay. do Reno, Reno. Reno and Rima, PLN 12-0-0-0-1-3. Right, we only have three people, Mr. LaCourt, Mr. Stevens, and the chairman. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Mr. LaCourt? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Chairman Orsini? Yes. Okay. The, we have the VGS one. Oh, sorry. That, that we yeah. just handed out this evening. That's Novell. We got we got them. They want to get moving, and they can't get their financing unless we adopt it because they okay. have to go through this. This so is the uh, one on uh, uh, campus and uh, Cottontail, right? Yeah, so Marty's office got it done. They just got the minutes. They got it done real quick, so we want to get it. Okay, so uh, it's in your. It's on the, the okay. dais in front of you. So uh, VGS Holdings, PLN 13-0-0-0-0-6. Everyone here is eligible to vote except for uh, Mr. Stevens. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. <laughs> Councilman Chase. Yes. Mr. LaCourt. Yes. Mr. Giver. Yes. Mr. Mettler. Yes. Mr. Pettit. Yes. Mr. Onyaka. Yes. Chairman Orsini. Yes. Okay, um, discussion. <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, vouchers, uh, the planning board attorney, um, Marty Murphy, sitting here to Make my a left. motion to approve. 833, May Retainer, normal. normal. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, real quick, uh, we recently, recently received his June retainer in the same amount. Mm -hmm. Could I uh, request that the board approve that as well? Absolutely not. No, oh, of course. <laughs> Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm staying. Okay. Motion carries. Ordinance number 4021-13. This is the one that's been, uh, I believe, back and forth a couple of times with the, you know, zone changes and permitted uses and all this other stuff that we've seen multiple, multiple times. So I'm just going to make a motion for it that we uh, endorse it and uh, send it to council for which had its opening hearing. So I guess the next step will be the uh, public hearing 625 and then adoption, et cetera. So second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
And just really quick, per the, just for the record, this was a specific um, subject of a master plan amendment. So it's absolutely consistent with the master plan. It implements the master plan. Right. <coughs> okay, uh, last discussion item, agricultural management practices, rule changes. You yeah, want to say um, Mr. Chairman, I think that was emailed. The rule changes, uh, the right to farm rule changes were emailed about three or four weeks ago to any members of the board. Uh, wanted to see if this board had any comments or suggestions. We have done our initial review, and there are some things that we would like to comment on. One of them is that they have very specific changes to the type of signage that is permitted and the type of on-site signage is fairly consistent with their ordinance. They do have some off-site signage that we are concerned about that this would allow all through the state, which would allow off-premise signage, which we don't allow any place else. In fact, it would allow it up to a half a mile away, up to six signs in various sizes. So. Uh, Staff would like to comment on that and would want to hear whether it, it there it signs to advertise farming activities, and we it was, they have new rules right now that they have to comply with the local ordinances. This would supersede all local ordinances, which would allow that would be the only businesses in the town that would be allowed to have off-premise signs up to a half a mile in circumference from the sign. Well, two points. Uh, one is, I remember having a discussion with respect to real estate signs, and I think we have uh, allowance for them off-site at a nearby intersection. Uh, we, we, the only, the, the only real estate... Very limited sign. Yeah, the ones that we allow off-premise for that are, you can put them up in the morning and take them down at night when you have an open house. You're allowed, I think, five or six, five or six of those, but that's limited to the open house yeah, and the people. The day of the open yeah, they're not house. not allowed to have them off premise for your normal real estate sign. Oh, is it going to say farm state in the head, or is it, going to say it, it could say farm state. It would say whatever it wants. There's a there's a size limit, and you can have I think there's six or eight of them within a half of a mile. It, it's just it's we don't I, think that's yeah, appropriate right, because yeah. it's 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 allowing a type of signage that isn't allowed any place else in the town for any other type of business. You're going to no. tell Reich Saddam he can't have a, a sign at the corner of Skillman well, no, that, and South that, Middlebush? That, that's, that's a little bit different because we do have special provisions where we allow uh, that type of signage on his property or on a corner of something for, right, for, for that. But this is talking about, you know, any type of farm a half a mile away could have and this there's also provision in there that at s special places or at very frequent intersections that they so they could have it six miles away saying you know Sudan farm stand six miles away if they get the permission of the property owner there staff feels that that is going a little bit greater than that's giving them something that no other business is allowed to do and that the state regulations are usurping what this township and most other townships allow with signs. We don't have any issue with the on-site signage because it's on the park. right. It's appropriate and it's in pretty much in conformance with ours. But what they're trying to do, not only that, they, they, they allow this proposed rule also allows them to put it on fences and other structures which we do not allow them to do. So we just what do we to do to correct this? Well, we send it to you to see if there's any questions. This is this is the major point, and there's some other stuff to do with some engineering items that you know engineering will be commenting on. We just want to make sure the board is okay with us commenting on and sending those comments to uh, to the county and the state to try to make them be more in conformance with the local regulations instead of usurping the local regulations. Would you would you want to like? <clears throat> uh, Collate those comments from the township and just put them in our next packet so we sure. can just see them and then I assume we can just verbally tell you that we endorse them. Sure. I mean, what you're saying is still within the comment period. Yeah, yeah. we, we, well, we will be. Thing, yeah. I mean, and there's some good things. I mean, there's a thing that now that when they, when they put their plan into the county, they're now going to be required to do a public notice just like this board does. 
because when they give them farm protection, that's a great amount of protection, so they want to notify everyone within 200 feet and the municipality. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But there are some I other things. I think we debated that when we passed our right to farm ordinance, whether uh, how much notification there should be. Yeah, and, and most of the stuff in here is it's very good. It's giving the farmers the right to do things they should be able to do, assuming they practice the best management and they get approval from the, the county ag board. It's very good. There's just some stuff that flies right in the face of our ordinances and would supersede that that we have concerns over. So. No, I think that's an entirely reasonable and just, uh, you know, uh, write it up and uh, just let us, uh, you know, okay. uh, see it. Uh, I, have, sure. I have one question, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. This, this would also include, I'm assuming, Christmas tree farming? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, we, ha we actually have a special ordinance that allows uh, some, some, some signage for that six or eight week period. If you get the permission, you can advertise for that because it's a short period sale. Okay. We actually have, I think there's five or six that come every year, and every year I sign the same sheet of paper just with my... <laughs> You know, name saying that they can put those signs up in the same places. All right, thank you. Okay, any other matters in here? Or are we done? Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.